There's some flyers in the back so that you can um, take and distribute to friends. Or if you've received it digitally by email, you can forward that on. And So make sure you touch base with them, talk to them, and invite them. Any of those that are watching that have thought, someday I'm going to go to that church and I'm going to visit them and worship with them, we invite you <laughs> to come on that day. There will be no evening service that day because we're going to spend the day um, with our um, guests and fellowship, and it'll be a good time. Amen? Amen. And I thank God for hearing our prayers. This hurricane seems to have skirted uh, a lot of the area down there, but I know there's some, some damage, mostly by water, but loss of life has been minimal. Thank God. And we thank God for keeping and protecting. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's worship him tonight. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's so easy to yeah. get caught up living life. Yep. Most of us have some kind of a routine that we follow in our lives. Get up, do this, do that, go to bed. Get up, do this, do that, go to bed. And we rob ourselves of the peace and joy of the Holy Spirit if we don't That's dedicate right. some time right. with our yeah. Savior. And the world makes everything look really beautiful and really glamorous and really fun and so entertaining. But the Bible teaches us that we're all going to stand before him one day. Right. It doesn't matter your age. You're going to stand before him, and he's going to say to you, did you obey my word? Do you have a relationship with me? And we get to answer for ourselves. So a lot of people think, oh, God sends people to hell. No, he doesn't. People send themselves to the eternity that they choose, right? So we have to make sure that our choices are wise choices. Amen? The world doesn't tell you that part. The world doesn't tell, talk about life after we pass away. Hallelujah. He starts a good work in us. He puts good people in our lives to help influence us to move in the right direction. And we have to choose whether or not we're going to follow his word on our own, even after all of that good advice. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Begun a good work in you. Oh, he who's begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. He'll be faithful to complete it. permission to work in my heart, in my life, in my mind, in my spirit, in my attitude, Lord God, I give you permission, Lord, to make me who you destined me to be, who make me, Lord, like you, Jesus. I want to be like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. 
Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. Oh, I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, you came from heaven to earth to show. Jesus. Thank you for your precious blood, Lord God. Oh, that we would be sober and realize, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, the death you died. Oh, Lord God, for our salvation. Thank you, Jesus. It's you who gives me strength. Oh, nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open and strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Oh, nothing is impossible through you. I can do anything. Oh, I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible through you Blind eyes are open Strongholds 
bones are broken, I am living by faith. Oh, nothing is impossible, not gonna live by what I see. I'm not gonna live by what I feel. Deep down I know that you're here with me. I know that you can do anything. Through you I can do anything. Lord, I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible through you. Oh, blind eyes are open and strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Oh, nothing is impossible through you. I can do anything. I can do all things because it's you who gives me strength. Oh, nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open and strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Not going to live by what I see. I'm not going to live by what I feel. Deep down I know that you're here with me. I know that you can do anything. I believe, I believe, Jesus. I believe, I believe in you. Oh, I believe, I believe, Jesus. I believe, I believe in you. Oh, I believe, I believe, Jesus. I believe, I believe in you. Oh, I believe, I believe, Jesus. I believe, I believe in you. I'm not going to live by what I see. I'm not going to live by what I feel. Deep down I know that you're here with me. I know that you can do anything. Through you I can do anything. Oh, I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Oh, nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Oh, nothing is impossible through you. I can do anything. Yes, I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open and strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Nothing's impossible, Lord God. Nothing's impossible with you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, water, you turned into wine. You open the eyes of the blind, no, there's no one like you, none like you. 
and into the darkness you shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you oh our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome in power our god our god oh our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome in power our god our god oh water you turned into wine you open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you and into the darkness you shine lord out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you there's none like you Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, oh our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God our god and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand against and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand against and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us what can stand against and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand again what could stand against our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome in power our god our god oh our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome in power our god our god and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand against and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand against and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand against and if our god is for us who could ever stop us and if our god is with us then what could stand against what could stand against our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome in power our god our god oh our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome in power our god our god our god oh we serve a great god hallelujah give him praise hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let's give a praise to our God. Come on, let's give a praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Your Lord, I magnify your Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. You are worthy. Oh, He's worthy here tonight. He's worthy here tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated here tonight. Thank you, singers, musicians. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is stronger. Do you believe that? You know, when the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, sometimes we don't think that it means strength to endure. Right? Somehow, sometimes we think it's just going to energize us and we're just going to leap or rise above, and God does do that, yeah. But I, I can do all things through Christ also means strength to endure what needs to be endured. Praise God. It's interesting, when we look in the Bible, we see that storms, when we talk about storms. Whenever there was a storm with the disciples, God was about to do something. First time they're in the boat and he's asleep and it's a big old storm, but on the other side there's going to be legions cast out. There's going to be victory. When they come back from feeding the 5,000, he's not in the boat, but he's watching. Amen. He's not in the boat, but he's watching and he starts to walk on the water. And he said, Mark says he's going to go by him. He had looked, he was about to go by them, 649, you look at it. But they cried out, and he talked with them. Storms lead to victory. And what you've got to do is if you're with the Lord and there's a storm, if he's in the boat, wake him. If he's not in the boat, cry out to him. And God's going to get you through the storm. Amen. So storms are going to come. Storms of life will come. The Bible tells us that. And a lot of times there's things we can only learn in the storm. You know, they didn't really understand. They got a revelation that Jesus was just more than a prophet when they saw him walking on the water. What kind of man is this? <laughs> Moses didn't walk on the water. <laughs> Elijah didn't walk on the water. He might have walked through the water, but he didn't walk on the water. But Jesus is walking on the water. I don't have to pay, make a path. I just walk on the water. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, I can walk on the situation. Hallelujah. And so we need to understand that there's revelation of who God is and how God cares for us and how God loves us. And in all things, God is trying to get us beyond feeling guilty for our sin so that we're serving him out of guilt, but that we love him because he loves us. There are many people that they come to an altar and get a Holy Ghost they, they, and they start to live a certain way because they're convicted of their sin, but they never develop a relationship beyond that. Where I'm doing it because I love him. I'm doing it because I know he loves me, and I want to love him back. And without storms, we never are going to reach that point. Praise God. May ask Brother Stephen to come and help us receive an offering here tonight. Amen. God is faithful. He is so faithful to us. Amen. Praise God. Lord God, I want to thank you for this time in your presence. 
Lord, that we might seek you and learn of you. As we bring these tithes and these offerings to your storehouse, O oh Lord, I pray that you bless it and sanctify it, that this gospel message might be spread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God in prayer. You can, you can open your Bibles tonight to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13. And we're talking about the role of a Christian tonight. We're looking a little more, and we are witnesses. And I know that we've talked about these particular aspects before, but we're going to talk about it again. But just back to the storm for a moment. So they have a storm when Jesus is asleep. They wake up Jesus. He calms the water, calms the wind. They come to the other side. They deal with the man, the demoniac that's got legion of devils. Great miracle has occurred, but nobody is ready to come to the Lord. They're scared. This is too much power for us. Go away. But the next time he comes back, they are ready for him. So even when God does something after the storm, it doesn't mean that it all falls into place right away. But sometimes great miracles that God does takes a while for it to settle in and people realize that they need God. Church, we got to get a hold of God. We have to get a hold of God. We have to learn that it's not a, about the rules. If you've got rules in your life, they're because of relationship. And if, and if there's no affection, then they just become rules. They become weights. They become heavy. But if you're doing it because you care about the relationship you have with God, it changes how you look at the boundaries you draw in your life. They're not there because you're afraid. They're there because you want to maintain relationship. Amen. Praise God. Acts 1 and 8. I, have, I said Matthew 5.13. And actually, we will go there first just to make it easier to stay in sequence as the Bible flows. So Matthew 5.13 through 16 talking about the role of a Christian, we are witnesses. And we talked about we're saints, we're sheep. We talked about different aspects. We are part of a body. Okay, we're talking about we are witnesses. He says, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Then in Acts 1 and 8, again, a familiar scripture to all of us here. Acts 1 and 8, Jesus, really Jesus, the last sentence we have from Jesus before he ascends up to heaven. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and on to the uttermost part of the earth. So we see that God wants us to be witnesses. And then in Philippians 2, 14 and 16. And it says, Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation or people, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, Holding forth the word of life. Say that. Holding forth the word of life. Amen. See, God, God has given us a word of life to hold forth. 
Amen. And sometimes we don't, we don't hold it forth the right way. Sometimes we hold forth a rule or a standard or a requirement, but we don't hold forth the word of life. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Some, sometimes, you know, we, we, do, we don't hold it forth. We need to hold forth that what we've got leads to eternal life. What we've got leads to a relationship with God. What we've got will save a person and change their life. You know, wherever the gospel gets into somebody's life, their life gets better. It always does. I'm reading, I'm reading a book on the Moravian Church, which actually started before the Re Reformation, back in the 1400s, almost 100 years before, the, before Martin Luther, the Moravian Church, the United Brethren in Bohemia, under John Huss. And wherever they came in and started to preach, and they were allowed to preach, all of a sudden schools spoke, sprung up, education sprung up, universities sprung up, the people prospered, there was peace, and what was going on, and they were being more prosperous and more peaceful than all these other nations around them. And their universities were as good as the ones that were going on in France and Germany. The gospel will prosper you if you get a hold of it. The good news will change your life. And that's not the only time I've read that in books. I read that once about, I had a book called The Bamboo Cross. It might be in the church library downstairs. And it was about a missionary preaching to a tribe in Vietnam. I think before the Vietnam War, probably when the French were still there. And there was a, a tribe there. There was a tribe that they were so superstitious, they would plant one crop. And if there was a big monsoon rain that wiped out the crops, they'd say, God is mad against us. And they would not replant, even though they could, and would starve for the rest of the year. Their kids were sick. They weren't prospering at all. And a missionary came in, started to preach the gospel to them. The superstition was broken. They, they, had, they were not afraid to replant. They started to prosper. And all these tribes around them were still having a hard time, but they were prospering because the gospel had been preached to them and they had applied it to their life. If you apply God's word to your life, it will break the chains of bondage and fear, give you peace so that you can accomplish what you need to accomplish. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we're so tired because we didn't sleep at night because we're worried about something. If we'd give it to God, we could sleep. Sometimes that's right. Amen. Sometimes we go to bed with a weight on us that God never intended for us to bear. But if I'll give it to him, if I believe he really cares for me, if I believe that he's really who he says he is, that he'll never leave me nor forsake me, if I really believe that he's the faithful God, if I really believe he's come that I might have life and life more abundantly, if I really believe the scripture says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which passes understanding. If I really believe that, I can give it to God. But sometimes we're looking for a feeling. Sometimes we're looking for an immediate answer. We're so worried about what might happen. When it does, and when half the time, what we worry about never happens. We just get it all worried in our mind and our anger. And we get all anxious and we can't sleep. Amen. So a primary aspect of, of the Christian's life is being a witness, Acts 1 and 8. When we receive the Holy Ghost, we receive power or ability to be a witness. Now, look at this, this thought here. People without the Holy Ghost, they can talk about Jesus. And they can have experiences with the Lord. However, the Holy Ghost gives us special ability to witness. Look at the disciples. They already knew Jesus. They already believed in him. After they saw him in the resurrection, 
They knew who he was. They believed in him. John Thomas in the Gospel of John said, My Lord and my God. They knew who he was. But Jesus said, Don't witness yet. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So again, that doesn't mean you can't talk about Jesus and it doesn't mean you don't have anything to say. But the Holy Ghost gives us a special ability to witness that others do not have. If it wasn't true, Jesus would have said, go out and start witnessing and when the Holy Ghost comes, you'll have, it'll be amplified. But he said, wait, wait again. Paul had a great experience on the Damascus Road. He's got a great experience. Jesus appears to him. Jesus talks to him personally. But he's still told, go to a street called Straight, and you're going to be told what you must do. You can look up most of the translations. The majority of them say what you must do or what you should do. There's a couple that say some different things. So it means what you must do. <laughs> and when Ananias shows up, he said, I'm here so that you can be healed and receive the Holy Ghost. What am I trying to say? The Holy Ghost gives you special ability to witness. It gives you a special power and anointing to be a witness. Amen. Amen. Again, we're witnesses. The Holy Ghost will move upon us with special anointing to witness about Jesus. Look at some examples in the book of Acts. Here, here's some examples of what the Holy Ghost did. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. It says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were shaken was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God in boldness. So the Holy Ghost will give you a boldness to say, not to be proud, not to abuse, but it'll give you a boldness to say what needs to be said about God. So here they were, they, they they were threatened not to preach this. But here they prayed, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And notice, some of these people, this is a refilling. So sometimes, if you're having a problem, you just need to pray again until you get filled up again. Get that anointing. Get into the presence of God. Pray until you get something from the Lord. Amen. Again, the, in, in Acts 4.33, a little bit further down, it says, And with great power gave the apostles witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. Again, that Holy Ghost is giving them a special anointing to be a witness. Do you believe that? I believe that. Amen. Maybe you don't believe that, but I believe that. The Holy Ghost will work with gifts. The Holy Ghost gives you access to gifts, and particularly the gifts of the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. A lot of times when you're witnessing to somebody, you don't know what to say, but the Holy Ghost tells you. The Holy Ghost gives you a word. The Holy Ghost gives you a scripture. The Holy Ghost gives you understanding. The Holy Ghost lets you know this is where they're at. This is how you need to go. Amen? Come on, the Holy Ghost gives us power to be witnesses. We're called to be witnesses, and that Holy Ghost gives us the ability to be the witnesses that the Lord wants us to be. Not some of us, everybody with the Holy Ghost. And we're not talking about our education. We're talking about what God does. We're not talking about how long we've been in the church or whether we got a license or position, we're talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Again, the Holy Ghost will bring scriptures to our minds. And I think everybody here 
has testified of experiences at one time or another. X 14, or not X, but John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and shall bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Listen, I've experienced it and I know others have. You start talking to somebody about, somebody about Jesus and all of a sudden you got scriptures coming to you you didn't even know you knew. And sometimes you're even remembering where they are in the Bible. And you're thinking, I don't remember studying that. But there it is. Because the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will help us. It'll bring scriptures. Amen. So the Holy Ghost gives us a special anointing to be witnesses. Again, it's not that other people without the Holy Ghost can't witness. They can. But they're limited. What's needed when you're witnesses is to get to that person. How did Jesus reach the woman at the well? The Holy Ghost in him, the Holy Ghost who he was, knew and got the word and talked to her from her position. Right? The woman at the well? You're a prophet. Yeah, you got five husbands. The one you got now, you're not married to. That's the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost can do that for any of us. I'm not sure you believe. <laughs> okay. Amen. I'm not sure you believe it. Okay, but it's true. All right. So another major aspect of witnessing in our life is we're epistles. We're letters. People see our lives. Our lives are read. 2 Corinthians 3 and 2. Second Corinthians 3 and 2, ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. In other words, when you've got the Lord, people recognize that. They recognize it. They recognize you got something they don't have. They may not understand it's Jesus, but they recognize you have got something they do not have. This is why they'll come and tell you their problems. They recognize a safe place because they sense you have something that others do not have. Amen. They'll come up, though. They recognize. In our lives, the way we live our lives. This is why the devil does tries to discourage us and fight against us because he knows our life is a book that is read of all men. They might not read the book of Acts, but they'll read the book of our life. Amen. They'll read the book of our life. So the devil will fight big time against you living for God, trying to discourage it because he knows he might be able to keep them from reading the Bible, but he can't keep them from reading your life. Amen. And so this is another point here. Being a Christian doesn't make us perfect. So sometimes we get caught in the perfect thing. supposed to be live right for God. Yeah, you are supposed to live right for God, but we're living in a human body. Now, we're not excusing sin, but do not cast yourself out because you slip. Get up. The blood of Jesus is still big enough. And don't let others' opinions be the blood. Let the blood be the blood. Amen. And so we have to, we, it means that we're not without fault, but we're supposed to live, we are supposed to endeavor to live sinless and holy. So it's just like running the race. You trip in the race, do you give up or do you get up? You get up. All right, same thing a living for God. I trip, do I quit or do I get up? 
So I'm endeavoring to run the race. I'm endeavoring to live holy. I'm endeavoring to live the way God wants me to live. So I'm putting an effort into it. Amen. And so we need to understand that because we're a witness with our life, you getting up often says more than you not getting up or you fail, you living perfect. You get up because you believe it. You get up because you love Jesus. That often says more than the person that never slipped. They just think that's their personality. But when you slip, they know you're human like them, and you get up again, they know, hey, that must be something. Well, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. So follow peace and holiness with all men. Amen. We're endeavoring. We're endeavoring. We're striving. Amen. But just because we trip, get up. You're not running the race for me. You're running the race for your relationship with God. And we should have a humility about ourselves, yet a boldness for the Lord. Right? We have humility about who we are. We are who we are because God has given us grace and God's worked in our lives. But our boldness can be for him. He is God. He is the great God. He is able to do whatever is needed. Hallelujah. Amen. So James 4 and 6 says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and so you receive grace. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. So I stay humble. God will give me the grace that I need. 1 Peter 5 and 6, similar thing. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. But now notice in Acts 13 and 46, it says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold, and said, it was necessary that the word of God should have first been spoken to you, but seeing you have put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we go to the Gentiles. I don't believe that boldness was their personality. I believe that boldness was by the Holy Ghost. They weren't exalting themselves. They were exalting the word of God. Again, in Acts 18 and 5, Acts 18 and 5, and when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. Amen. The spirit of God moved on him in his own spirit. He was convicted. I need to testify. Even though he'd run into some oppositions in Corinth and had wondered about it, and the Lord said, don't worry, I got many people here. The Spirit gave him the boldness to speak what needed to be spoken. The Holy Ghost will work in us. So we've got to be humble about ourselves, but bold for God. Hallelujah. We need to be teachable and able to receive correction. So we're talking about, you know, our lives, our epistles, Part of that is the ability to, to be teachable and receive correction. Hebrews 12 and 6. Hebrews 12 and 6, again, familiar scriptures. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God deal with, dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without ch chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you fatherless. You don't have a legitimate father. So the Bible says bastards there. So we understand that God will chasten us. But the thing what, what we sometimes miss is, God might use Brother Mark to chasten me. Sometimes we're waiting for God to speak to us in our prayer. And sometimes he does. Often he will. But sometimes he'll let somebody else do it. He might even let somebody in the world 
chasten you. Right? Nebuchadnezzar chastened Judah. Sometimes God will even use somebody in the world to chasten us. It's not who it is, it's whether it's true or not that counts. It's not who it is that's doing it, it's whether it's true or not that applies to us. That's what counts. So again, we need to be teachable. Okay, 1 Peter 1, 1 and 2, or 1 Peter 2, 1, 2 and 2 rather. 1 Peter 2 and 2 says, Wherefore laying aside all malice, guile, is verse 1, and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world that she may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So, being a witness also includes your desire for the word. Your desire for the word. Why? Because the more you know about the word, the better you are able to teach and witness to others. Does that make sense? And I know the Holy Ghost will give us things. We already read that. The Holy Ghost will give us understandings and things we didn't study. All right? But the Bible also says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So that means we need to prepare ourselves to be witnesses. It doesn't all just happen automatically. We must have our confidence in the Lord and not ourselves. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Not all things with Christ, or not all things by Christ, but through Christ. Right? There's a difference between being beside Christ and being in Christ. And it's kind of like what Jesus says in John 15 and 7. If my words abide in you, and ye abide in me, Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. It's not up there. But God just brought that one. Okay. Again, if we're, if we're a Christian, we endeavor. Okay, we're not perfect, but we're endeavor to living right. We, we're, we're endeavoring to be hum, humble about ourselves and bold for God. We're endeavoring to be teachable. We're endeavoring to have our confidence in the Lord and not ourselves. And, and our, look, our outlook on life should be different from the world. I mean, that, that's one of the big things. You don't, you, don't come, you don't come to work all bummed out and upset because your favorite team didn't win the World Series or the Stanley Cup or whatever it is. You're not knocked out of the ballpark because the stock market crashed. You might not like it, and you might have concerns, but you know who ultimately holds everything. So look at, look at that scripture there, 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. Well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. In other words, the reason you can deal with those things is you're not looking at what is right in front of you or what seems to be the physical limitation. You're looking at the God that's in charge of everything, that's able to part the waters, that's able to walk on the waters, that's able to call something that doesn't exist into existence, you're looking at that God for an answer. All right, so we're called to be witnesses, but a major aspect of witnessing in our lives, again, is having a proper attitude. Again, we're, we're endeavoring to live the right way, but 
if I fall, I'm not claiming to be perfect. I'm claiming to be washed by the blood. And I need to have a repentant attitude. I need to have a humility about myself. Whatever I got or whatever I am, it's because God has allowed it. Same for you. God allowed it. God's given it. God allows it. Amen. Be teachable. Doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. Doesn't mean you understand everything or know all that you need to know. Have confidence in the Lord and have an outlook on life. Again, this is one of the biggest things. People will see that you look and handle life differently than they do. Amen. As Christians, we're salt. We read that in Matthew 5.13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall be salted? Good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men. Salt has a preserving quality that helps us witness. What do I mean by that? The presence of a Christian in a community or a business or a neighborhood or on a plane makes a difference for everybody that are on that plane. You believe that? I absolutely believe that. Amen. The Lord will bless a business that you're in because you're in it. You're living for God. God says, that's mine, I'm going to take care of them. God will often bless that business, not because they're the greatest business or the greatest entrepreneurs or whatever, but because you are there and God wants to take care of you, God will bless that. Amen. Psalm 113, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, brings forth his leaf, won't, won't wither whatsoever. Whatsoever he does will prosper. That means God will bless what you're doing because you're there. Just like God blessed Potiphar's house because Joseph was there. God blessed the prison because Joseph was there. Amen? Again, you, you're there in the boat. You know, you're there in the situation. God is looking different. Paul's on the boat. He's on his way to Rome. They've been in a storm. I think it's 14 days and nights they haven't seen anything. And they're all, they're all giving up of their life. But guess what? Because Paul is in the boat, they're all saved. Because Paul is in the boat, they are all saved. We make a difference. When we're in the situation, God is looking. You make a difference. I make a difference. Amen. We are salt. There's a preserving influence there. God will preserve a business. God will preserve a neighborhood. God will preserve people on a plane or in a boat because a Christian is there. Again, Sodom, the angels were restrained. If you read Genesis 19 and 22, on the day that Sodom and Gomorrah, they're going to rain brimstone, the angel says, get going because we can't do anything till you escape to thither. Because Lot was there, it held back judgment till he got out. And we know Lot wasn't even a great person living for God. He'd been mixed up in a lot of stuff. His thinking had been kind of confounded and mixed up. But even so, because Lot was there, God's, the angel said, we can't do anything. I'm going to read it. We're going to read it so you can see it for yourself because I'm not sure you believe it. Genesis 19, 22. The angel says, Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither, 
Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. Those angels were restrained because of Lot's presence. Now, I think if Lot had made his mind up on staying, he would have had to suffer judgment. But while he was in the place of decision, it held back judgment. My point is, my point is, Christians are salt, and we season the environment. We have an effect on the environment that we are in because we are Christians. I mean, it's just the same thing. There's, there's stories that you, we don't even know the half of what God has done because you or you or somebody else that was a Christian was there in a situation. You don't know the half. You don't know where there was criminals getting, just like criminals might come and have a job, but then they see police guys, they say, we're not going to do it. The enemy moves in the spirit world, he's going to do something, but he sees a Christian there and says, we're not going to do it. We don't know where somebody came to kill somebody at work, but you met them, they saw you, and it was averted. Well, let's give praise to God. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you the glory and the honor. Amen. Again, Christians are salt. So salt has, it has a flavoring. It, it changes the environment. Just like salt changes the flavor of the food you cook, the Christian in the environment changes the spiritual flavor of the environment. But also, salt has a healing and disinfecting quality. Okay, the presence of a Christian provides a channel for the Lord to work through to bring healing emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Again, they see you, and they hope can be kindled. They could have come to work with no hope. They could be out with no hope. But they see you, and hope is kindled. Amen. Again, we become channels. We become channels for the Lord to work through through prayer. You're in the work environment. You know there's problems, but you pray about it. And God starts to work and intervene. You believe that? I really do. I mean, I'm not just giving you stuff that looks good. I, I'm, I'm telling you what I, I believe. I really believe, and the Scripture says this. So 1 Timothy 2 and 1, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. In other words, your prayers can bring peace. Your prayers can bring a calm environment. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. If Jesus can say to the storm, peace be still, and Jesus is in you, if you get Jesus in you to say it, the storm is going to stop. <laughs> Praise God. Again, James 5 and 16. James trying to encourage us that prayer does work if we're living right and we are fervent about it. James 5 and 16, confess your faults one to another, pray for one another that you may be healed, and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's why the devil doesn't want you to be on top of your game. He wants you discouraged so that you think, ah, my prayers might work. Ah, there's no reason to pray because it's, it's been this way all along. The effectual fervent 
prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. Are you living right? Okay. Amen. Are you fervent about it? Okay. That prayer is going to do something. Amen. Now don't put a requirement on God on how you want it done, but pray, pray the prayer for God to help and fix things and it's going to work. Can you say amen? Amen. And again, the presence of a Christian can help diffuse toxic situations and anger of anger and violence. 1 Peter 4 and 8 says, Charity, above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. God's love through you can cover toxic situations. Oh, it does work. It works. Because I can remember I was a test engineer working at Brockton, amen, with my boss, and he was all upset, amen. But then I remembered Proverbs 15, a soft answer turns to wrath. And he wasn't mad at me. He was mad at what was going on. And I put my hand on his shoulder and said, Dave, it's going to be okay. And everything evaporated. God is faithful. Oh, let's give him praise. God, we praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. You are able. You are able. Come on, you're salt, you're salt, you're salt, you're salt. Amen, you're salt. You can have healing. Amen, you can be, you can change the flavor of the circumstance. Hallelujah. The role of a Christian, we're witnesses. And then finally, we know we're light. Again, this goes with our lives. Philippians 2, 14 through 16. And I think it's interesting. It's Matthew 5, 14 through 16 is you're the light of the world. Philippians 2, 14 and 16, we're light. So Philippians 2.14, do all things without murmurings and disputings that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. What does that mean? When you're living the Christian life, you show others there is another path. There is another way to live. You don't have to live like everybody else is living. There is another way. And that other way can be peace and joy, give you peace and joy. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are caught up in what you call the rat race, the so-called rat race. They don't know what to do, but the Christian living for God. Amen. You are light holding forth light unto them. You show yourselves, you show people there's another way. I don't have to leave work all bent out of shape. I don't have to be discouraged when I'm getting up on Monday morning. I can remember how many times I got up on Monday morning, went to work and was glad to go to work because I was going to have an opportunity to witness to somebody about Jesus. Amen. And people were dragging in, but I was ready. I was a awake I was glad not because I was getting paid I was glad I was going to have an opportunity to be a witness for the Lord amen so God will give you a different outlook on life and it shows others you know hey you can be all ground up in this you can be all caught up in this but you don't have to there is another way you want another way I'll show you another way Jesus. Amen. If you want another way, I'll show you. You don't have to live life like everybody else. You don't have to be afraid because you don't have enough strength or resources or connections or talents and all those things. You got a God that's got all the resources. You got a God who is the source. You got a God who can give you talents on the spot. A God who can download into you to do what you need to do. Again, I've told you the stories where, where I was made a development engineer and I was doing things that I didn't have training to do or just maybe just a little bit. 
but God would show me how to figure it out. Praise God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Amen. So Philippians 3 and 20, or 3 and 20, again, we look at life differently. For our conversation or our manner of living is in heaven. From whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, yeah, we're here. And we, we've got issues. We know that life is real. But we know that we've got something to help us deal with life that others don't have. Amen. That others don't have. And, and we really, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But again, you got to put your care on him. He didn't say cast 75% of your care and the big ones you're worried about you hold on to. But he says cast all your care. Not most of it. Not 99%. Cast all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Cast it. Don't, don't, don't just lift it up in prayer, but then hold it. See, that's what a lot of times we'll do. Okay, i got to take it to God. I'll lift it up in prayer. Amen. I come up to the altar, and I got it. Amen. And I pray to God, and I met my prayer, but, but I walk away. But i got to go to God. God, I'm going to cast it on you. Here it is. Praise God. Amen. I'm leaving it there. I can't fix it, but he can. Hallelujah. 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 Our lives demonstrate there is a living God who watches, provides, and intervenes in this life. Sometimes God's letting a situation to occur that everybody knows isn't right, but he's going to deliver you so that they can see there's something about your life. Now, if you murmur and complain about it, you, you undermine it. But if you leave it to God, God will take care of it. And my brother Bell told, he's got a story about that. Working for the airlines or the F FAA or something like that, he's got a story where he, taught, he had a boss that didn't like him because he was a Christian. So his boss said, I put him... He thought he was demoting him by putting him over into this other place, this other job where he just had to count, and, you know, like materials and be an inventory and all these different things. But after he got put over there, things happened in all the other departments and all these things, and he was isolated and okay there. And eventually he got promoted above because he came over there. He could have complained about it, but God put him in a safe spot, amen, to bring him out. Amen. We, if we're, we got to trust the Lord. we got to keep our eyes on him. Amen. It might not look good, but he's bigger than the situation. Hallelujah. Again, we got the examples of three Hebrew children. Their lives, they're cast into the fire. They could have said, you know, what good is it going to do for me to give my life up? I'll, you know, I'll just be burned up and no, nothing's going to happen. But we're, we're not going to do what you want, Nebuchadnezzar. We're not going to serve another God. God is able to deliver us. And even if he won't, we're still not going to do it. So God was using that situation to create a miracle, to create a witness. Amen. And what does Nebuchadnezzar end up saying? Their God is the only true God. Amen. Again, Daniel in the lion's den. You say, well, it's similar, but it's a different, now it's a different dynasty. Babylon's been conquered by the Medes and the Persians, and Daniel's under Darius now. It's a whole different group of power that's there. Daniel has lived righteous. They're jealous. They're doing the wrong thing. They're lying. They're trying to make traps for him. But Daniel just keeps living for God. Keeps living for God. They're lying, but I'm still going to pray. They're making laws, but I'm still going to pray. I'm not going to point a finger at them. I know what they're doing, but I'm still going to pray. Amen. Because God is able 
to deliver me. And so oftentimes our lives demonstrate things that we are, are allowed to go through. We think the devil got the upper hand. Amen. The devil never gets the upper hand unless God allows it to be. He's still in control. The devil cannot fool God. He cannot deceive God. He cannot get by God. Amen. He can only do what God allows him to do. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Understand that your life is a letter. Your life is a light. As you live each day, you are showing somebody that there's a better way. Every time you come to church, you're showing a commitment to God. Not occasional commitment, but a devoted commitment. Every time you show up in the house of God, every time you live the right way, you are being a light. You're showing somebody there is a way. There is a different way. Way. There is a good way. There is a living God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Again, we're light, and our lives provide that opportunity for the Lord to manifest himself to others through us. And as we live our lives, it allows the light of God's truth to shine in the darkness of the world. As I already said, a consistent church attendance is a witness to the world. We got people in our neighborhood said, you're a pastor that we never told. We're pastors. And they know because we get up to go to church all the time. We get up. We're always going to church that it's a witness. As I've told you the story before, one, did one, one of the work days, the guy that used to live kitty corner from the church, not right directly across, but the second house in, one day came over, and he had never talked. I'd seen him before across the street. He'd never talked. He came over with his dog, was walking the dog, and as we're working around the church, he said, your ladies dress so nice when they come to church. He said, where I go to church, they dress just about any old way. They don't have any kind of standard. That's basically what he was saying. See, our lives are witnesses. Amen. We don't know. In the consistency of what we do, the consistency of what you do is saying something to those around us. Our, our lives demonstrate there is a truth which may be known by all. God's word is truth. Amen. You see, the word of God applied in our lives is what really separates us. Amen. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So just to encapsulate or just to review it, we're witnesses. As Christians, we're called to witness to the resurrection, saving power of Jesus Christ. We witness through the power of the Holy Ghost. We witness through our lives by being salt and light. It's part of the role of Christian. Let's stand tonight. Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, so prayer request for Sister Jen's daughter, Taylor, okay, with this scheduled C-section tomorrow to help with all the events, to help all the complications move away, and to give peace to Jennifer about it too. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, here tonight, Lord God. We're praying. Lord, we're lifting it up to you, Lord God, that you're able. Lord, through this, Lord, be a witness to Taylor. Lord, get a hold of her. Be a witness to her boyfriend, Lord. Be a witness to her children. Be a witness, Lord God, to Jen, Lord, and the rest of her family, Lord God. Lord, and we're asking you, Lord, that peace come upon Jen, Lord God, that passes understanding, that you'll put this into your hands, Lord God, and trust you, Lord, to work it out. And, Lord, we give you the praise. We're asking you to work in whatever way needs to be worked in this circumstance, Lord God, according to your will. 
in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. 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 Shake hands with somebody. Say, I'm going to be a witness. Amen. You're dismissed.